aerodynamic lift. So let's uh, look at a leaf drop pencil test one more time. See a nice drifting motion of the of the leaf. Now, in a previous tutorial, we talked about uh, Bernoulli's principle, which says that uh, when we have, say, air that is moving, uh, the faster the air moves, the lower the pressure. So if the air is not moving, we have normal atmospheric pressure. If it's moving, the pressure uh, decreases, and the faster it moves, the lower the pressure. Now, one of the most important applications of this uh, Bernoulli's principle is the creation of lift uh, for a, a wing. So if we have the airflow that goes fast over the top of the wing and slower uh, underneath the wing, then we have uh, lower pressure on top of the wing and higher pressure underneath the wing. This is, creates a pressure difference. Because of this pressure difference, we have a force and we call that lift. Now, wings uh, have shapes that uh, promotes this uh, difference of airspeed, but even something which is flat like a sheet of paper, if it's moving at an angle uh, with respect to uh, the path of action, is at an angle with the uh, orientation of the sheet of paper, then uh, we can actually have the same wing effect of the airflow being a different speed uh, above uh, compared to below and uh, resulting in this uh, pressure difference. Uh, although we think of lift as being an upward force, uh, it's not necessarily uh, always the case. In fact, the airfoil on a race car actually is an upside down wing. And so instead of pushing up uh, to lift the car, it actually pushes down. This is uh, advantageous for race cars because uh, they don't want to be flying up. They want to have a better traction with the ground without uh, adding weight. And so these uh, airfoils are, are useful. But getting back to the uh, drifting leaf, uh, as the leaf is falling, we actually have various uh, forces acting. There's, of course, always gravity. Uh, there's the air resistance that tends to slow the motion. And then we have finally the uh, force of lift, and that can uh, possibly deflect the path of action. Uh, it can also change the, the speed. Uh, if the path of action changes so that the uh, leaf is rising, then uh, that means that the leaf is going to slow down, uh, as long as we don't have a wind. If it's wind, then it's a, a different situation, then the force of the wind uh, can be uh, uh, affecting the uh, path of action and the timing and spacing. Now, it's a very similar situation with a uh, sheet of paper. Uh, even if though the sheet of paper is flat, uh, we still have these three forces of uh, gravity, air resistance, and uh, lift. If the uh, paper uh, curls, then uh, we have even uh, more likely to have a, a, wing, a type of wing effect um, with the airflow being different on one side to the other, uh, promoting the uh, lift. Now, uh, you realize that uh, the force of air resistance depends on the speed and the uh, orientation of a leaf and so does aerodynamic lift. So uh, because both of those uh, vary with uh, speed and the angle, uh, they are changing all the time. And that leads to a rather complex timing, spacing, and path of action for a leaf as it drifts to the ground. So uh, this um, complexity, the best you can hope for to create a believable animation is not so much to focus on the timing, spacing, and path of action in and of themselves, 
but to imagine or actually feel the forces that would be acting in terms of uh, the gravity pulling down, air resistance uh, slowing the motion, and then uh, lift uh, potentially uh, deflecting the path of action as well as the, the speed. So I feel a bit like uh, Obi-Wan telling you to use the force here, but uh, if you try to animate by feeling the forces that are acting and then uh, trying to reproduce that uh, timing, spacing, and path of action, uh, you, you're more likely to be successful in animating this type of motion. So let's look at a paper drop uh, pencil test because I wanted to mention another aspect of this type of motion. So right at the end, if you see the, uh, the settle as it slides on the ground, you notice an effect which uh, here we'll see in this uh, video as I slide these sheets of paper on a smooth surface. So you see this uh, type of smooth gliding motion that occurs right when the paper is just off the uh, surface of the lab table. Now there's an additional type of lift which occurs when uh, we have something like a smooth sheet of paper very close to a smooth surface and this is called the ground effect lift. So the um, presence of this uh, lower surface of the table enhances the amount of lift that we get. Uh, so there's an additional high pressure uh, cushion that is produced uh, between the paper and the table. And so that uh, cushion, uh, that high pressure uh, just supports the paper as it slides uh, over the surface. Uh, you won't typically see this with a leaf because the shape of the leaf is too irregular uh, and you won't see it if the uh, surface is rough like uh, the gr uh, grass or um, dirt. Uh, one more uh, example of lift which is not present with the uh, leaf drop or paper but I wanted to uh, mention because it's a type of lift created when an an object is spinning. So if we have say a ball that is uh, spinning, then the spinning motion uh, causes the airflow to be faster on one side where the flow goes in the same direction as the spinning of the surface uh, and the airflow is slower on the uh, other side. So the side where the air is going faster is lower pressure uh, and then the other side is higher pressure. This gives us a pressure difference and that leads to a force and this is called the Magnus force and this uh, effect is called the Magnus effect. Uh, an example of this is when we have a baseball that's thrown and the baseball has a spin. Uh, depending on the orientation of the spin, uh, this can either cause the uh, baseball to uh, tend to rise or tend to uh, drop faster than it would under simply gravity. Or if the uh, spinning is in a vertical axis then uh, this can cause the ball to uh, be deflected uh, left to right or, or right to left and this is a, a curve ball. So in uh, summary Aerodynamic lift is a force created by pressure differences arising from Bernoulli's principle. So whenever uh, air flow is a different speed on different uh, sides of, a, of an object, say, uh, we have this pressure difference and a resulting force. Uh, the force of lift can either be in the upward direction like an airplane wing or downward as the airfoil of a race car. 
or uh, sideways as a uh, yeah, curveball. Uh, the ground effect lift is an enhanced lift that occurs when a flat object uh, is flying just over a smooth surface, like a sheet of paper over a smooth table. And finally, the uh, Magnus effect is a special type of lift that is produced by an object's uh, spinning motion, the spinning motion causing a difference of um, airspeed one side of the object to the other. Anyway, those are the uh, basic forces that occur as an object is moving through the air, so hopefully that helps you in animating that type of motion.